What's up guys, my name is Eric and I have went down a new journey of life. I have repeated the same cycle so many times. I'm very grateful for my mom and most of all, Candace, who's the girl in my life who helped me grow as a human being. Um, back into therapy, back into just dealing and handling with and working through trauma that I've never dealt with or, or worked through at all in my life. And a lot of it came down to, I've always lied to therapists. I've lied to therapists all my life. And I learned that from my dad. I learned how to lie to ther about therapy and therapists from my dad because my dad went to therapy and my dad killed himself. So obviously he lied in therapy. So I learned those traits and those habits to pretend that everything's okay, to not give up everything that's here. And how to really find the right therapist. Here's my suggestion for you because it is hard. It's hard to find the right therapist. And so how do I know if I have the right therapist? And I've had some good therapists, but... To find the right therapist is this. You go in and you meet somebody and you're going to like them in about 60 seconds or less. If you sit down with this therapist and, and you start talking, they're kind of doing their intake of, okay, you know, how do I spell your name? Asking you questions a little bit about yourself. They usually will give you the whole like disclaimer. If you're thinking about committing suicide, any of that, I'm going to have to, uh, to turn you over. You're going to get that sense of comfort if I like this person or not. And if you like them, the next step is you got to be honest with yourself. And that's what it comes down to. I mean, I don't think there's necessarily good therapists or bad therapists. I think it's more of who we vibe with and who we feel being honest and open with is easier than others. And how I found my therapist is this. I, I don't know how to find therapists. I mean, I've opened up, you know, books and stuff and, and Googles, and that's really where you begin. The other thing that you can do is ask people who they go to. You'd be surprised how many people go to therapists. And just because maybe a therapist isn't helping somebody, doesn't mean that they're not going to help you. It's finding that person that you vibe with. And I have found my psychiatrist uh, who prescribes your meds for you through a friend of mine that, that worked for me. Um, end up liking the guy. He's a great psychiatrist, but that's what he is. He's a psychiatrist. He's not a psychologist, and, and he doesn't really help me a whole lot up here. And the other I found through the same friend's wife who referred this lady to me um, that I go to now. Her name is Susan. And that's how I end up finding my therapist. I, I've been to AA before, and in, in AA, if you're in addiction, go to AA, go to NA, and just say, hey, who is people like seeing for therapists? A lot of people in AA and NA uh, I see trauma therapists because odds are you're a dick, you're, you're not a dick, but your addiction is based around numbing, self-medicating, and you're probably trying to cover up and heal for some, some kind of trauma that you've been through. But the big thing I learned then is once you find these therapists, you know, it's like we're, we're, we're scared to be open with them or scared to be honest with them. And here's what I did with this therapist. And I had made this in my head of what I was going to do. I, I, I got to this point. I needed therapy. I was in an NA or AA meeting. Excuse me. I was getting my five-year chip. My life is falling apart. I'm sober, but my life is falling apart. Don't understand why my fucking life is falling apart because I'm sober. Everyone told me if I'm sober, life's going to get easier and better for me. And it, it did. I could handle things a little bit differently, but I didn't really address any of my trauma in life. And what is my trauma in life? I had a lot of childhood trauma growing up. Um, I think a lot of people deal with childhood trauma and get childhood trauma and don't even realize it. And then I also had the trauma that I never grieved. My, my wife committed suicide in 2015. My dad committed suicide in 2017. Uh, I already had built up from childhood trauma a core belief that the world rejected me, that I wasn't worthy of love, that I didn't deserve love. I'd already built this up from a childhood standpoint. And now my wife and my dad killed themselves the same month I was born. That My birthday. They killed themselves around my birthday. My dad killed himself on the 13th. My birthday is on the 17th. And my wife killed herself on the 27th. That alone is a lot of fucking trauma. And I never, ever addressed it. I thought addressing that trauma was ignoring it. That strength to ignore it and to push through. And that is what really reinforces core lie I had. And so when I sat down with my therapist... I didn't know what to tell her. I was like, I have a problem. Like there's, there's something wrong and I don't know what it is. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like, I've, I, I've been married four times. I've, I've went through, I've lost my wife to suicide. I lost my dad to suicide. Um, it's in the month of August. Uh, I'm losing a relationship right now. It's, it's a repeating behavior. I seek validation through like women. I seek validation through others. I don't really know what's going on. And that phrase right there 
that just mumbling garbage that I just, this is it because I had made a promise to myself that I'm going to be open and honest and, and transparent. And that is what started the communication back and forth with my therapist. That's what started my healing was just being open and honest. You know, therapists will ask you, you know, how are you feeling? How you, oh, I feel okay. I feel good. No, tell them exactly how you feel. This is what I'm feeling right now. You know, everyone's afraid to be open and honest with their therapist because what if they send me away? What if they, what if they send me the psych ward? You know what? They're not going to send you the psych ward because you, maybe your fascination is too much on, on this idolization and an idea of, of suicide or something of that sort. But when it all comes down to it, you want the pain to stop. And I can honestly say this, like I have attempted suicide and in my heart, would I have killed myself? No. I can honestly say that it was screaming out for help. Could I have ended up dying? I could have, but I didn't want to kill myself. I wanted just the pain to stop and I didn't know how to stop it. I didn't know what to do. And that is really where if you're honest like that and you're asking and seeking for help, they get you help. And what is help? I mean, shoot, it's asking a lot of questions. It's getting different exercises. It's reading different books, coming to different realizations, taking notes, journaling, all these different things to work on yourself and to find that self-worth. And if you don't have, like, this was one of the best exercises she did with me, you know, and she, she looks at me and goes, you don't have a lot of self-worth. You have none. You don't love yourself. I'm like, how do I get self-worth? And she's like, put your hand over your heart. Okay. okay. She goes, honestly, what do you feel right now? And I was like, I feel empty. She goes, so you feel a heartbeat? And I was like, yeah, I feel a heartbeat. Okay, so you're not heartless. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not heartless. I, I have a heart here. She's like, you just doing this is you forming self-worth. And it gave me this warm feeling. I'm like, hey, I got some self-worth. And it felt good. And it's a process like that of these good feelings of working through this stuff, being this open, being this vulnerable to really admit to yourself what these problems are and then finding the solutions to them because everything has a solution. And that solution might be a daily work ethic, a daily habit, a daily exercise, a daily something, but you start to work through it. And I think that's what we lose is I always look for the quick solution. I wanted to go into therapy and I want to be out of therapy as fast as humanly possible. But no, I won't. Peel this all open. Peel this brain open. Go to work on this brain. Go to work on this heart. So much of it has been learning not to use this and use this in my daily life. Because if I use this, this doesn't, doesn't lead me wrong. This though, this lies to me. This lies to me nonstop. This puts me, this is hell. You know, people ask me if I'm religious. And, you know, do I go to church? Do I believe in God? I believe that this is hell. I believe we were given this brain as hell. Because it lies to me nonstop. I mean, I can't wait to share about my relationship and how I've rebuilt my relationship by not listening to this and listening to this. How I've rebuilt my life by not listening to this, but listening to this. And it, it gives me goosebumps. I mean, I have literally cried more recently than I have my entire life because I was bred essentially and, and raised that emotion is weakness. You know, I grew up in a household that I didn't know how to fight. There, there was never conflict in my household, and that is so unhealthy. That then all of a sudden I didn't understand conflict in life. It's a struggle. Anybody going through it, it's a struggle. But here's where it all begins with. It begins with finding a therapist that you like, a therapist that you connect with, and being honest with them. Just being open and tell them. And if you don't know what the pain is, just say, dude, there's something wrong. There is something wrong, and I don't know what's wrong. I need help. And let them ask the questions and answer those questions, not with this, not out thinking yourself, not anything, but with this. What does my heart want? Because we know what our heart wants. How many relationships have we stayed in that our heart's not in it, but we're like, we're supposed to do this and we're unhappy and we're depressed and we have anxiety? I have. How many times have we really done it with this? This right here will set you free. This right here will keep you in that prison and it will throw away the key. But find the right therapist. And don't judge a therapist. Try a bunch of therapists. I mean, I did. I kind of, it wasn't like I was shopping therapists. I just had a bunch of different therapists lined up. And when I found the one that I liked and I, and I shit this, I got done with therapy and I'm like, dude, you, you make me feel like you're like, you know, a Jedi master and I'm a little Padawan, you know, I, I'm blown away. And that was, she was my therapist then. I canceled all my other therapy appointments. 
and I've been with her and I've made leaps and bounds and a lot of success with her. And I love now sharing about therapy. I love sharing about my experiences. I love sharing about what I've been through. So, I mean, hit that like and subscribe button. You know, hopefully somebody can relate to some of these, but I really enjoy sharing my experiences because maybe it will help somebody out there just feel less alone and maybe give you some answers of how to get what you want when it comes to therapy because it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when we lie to therapists and we think that therapy doesn't work and then we laugh at other people that are in therapy and we think that we're supposed to be able to handle it ourselves and we ignore that for daily problems instead of addressing the problems down the road that our brain always creates or that, you know, we always create by not addressing things. And it, all it does is repeat that cycle. I've learned that. From age, from age 19 to age 41, I repeated a cycle because I never addressed my trauma. I never did. And it's, it's rough. But I can tell you this, it feels so good when you start to address it. Because you know you can heal from it. And you start to heal from it. You start to feel good from it. Anybody out there going through it right now, trust me, believe me been there, find yourself a therapist that you connect with. When you sit down after a minute, two minutes, if you're like, I kind of like this person. I want to be open with this person. You feel it in here. You don't, don't use this. Use this. You feel it in here. I like this person. Be as open as humanly possible and just keep asking for help. Hit that like and subscribe button. Comment down below. You ain't alone.